We have here with us a very distinguished panel of truly professional experts in this area. So uh, we have three studies which will be summarized for you today. Uh, the first one will be from uh, Zambia. And uh, to present that is to my left, immediate left here, Mr. Ignatius Makumba, who is the Director of Forestry, the Ministry of Lands, uh, Natural Resources and Environmental Protection for Zambia. Um, after uh, Zambia, we will be uh, listening uh, to uh, Mr. Evares Nashanda, who is the Principal Forest Officer uh, for the National Red Plus Task Force in the Ministry of Environment in Tanzania. He is seated in the middle here. And following him, we will have uh, a commentary on the similar study on forestry valuations by Mr. Carlos Gomez, who is seated next to him, who is the National Red Plus Coordinator for the National Environmental Authority in Panama, and also at the same time, uh, the UNF C Red Plus Negotiator, as well as uh, co-president of the Red Plus Partnership. Uh, that will be followed by myself with uh, commentary quickly on Indonesia, these are four of the five forestry variation studies which are put together by the United Nations Environment Program. Uh, Tim, who is the uh, coordinator and, and host of these projects, is here. Thank you, Tim, for being, uh, being with us. But before I, I launch into the, and my colleagues here launch into the studies on forestry, let me just set the scene a little with a background in two ways. One is where we are and what we are doing, and is anyone listening? And uh, second is, what is this whole connection between, in the context of the landscape, between eco, agri, and food systems, and how we need to be conscious of this entire complex. And in that, I want to also formally announce to you and to this audience uh, the start of a study called the TEEB for Food and Agriculture. At this right. So the first question that I have to ask ourselves is anyone listening? And um, I was pleasantly surprised on my flight in from uh, India via London via Miami <laughs> to, to read as I'm an ex-banker, as some of you may be aware, I tend to read the financial press still. So this is the Wall Street Journal. And on page three, I suddenly look at this article which says, warmer water cited for rapid Antarctic melt. And uh, I think it was, I just smiled to myself saying that, oh, finally the financial world is actually putting this on page three. And of course, any of, of, are there any people from England in the audience? Any English or British people? Yes, so page three in England has a different connotation, but just forget that for the time being. But this is basically now the top financial journal talking about what is actually our topic. So I think finally, <laughs> finally the penny has dropped somewhere. Not only that, but there was another article in this, in this Wall Street Journal, which was on uh, Nobres, one of the Nobres brothers talking about uh, something that we have all discussed very much in the past, which is the, the freshwater generation function of rainforests. And can we just have someone close that door? I don't necessarily want to hear the pantry from here. Yes. Um, so, and all of these literally occupied one entire page of that newspaper. And I thought to myself, okay, you know, we are all traveling here to, uh, uh, to Peru and to Lima for some good purpose. The TEEP study is my next momentum in terms of the economics of ecosystems and biodiversity. It was in fact inspired by the stern review of climate change and we explored the value of ecosystem services and we explored it from different perspectives. One was the underlying ecology and economics of these ecosystems and what they provided. And together with that, of course, we tried to size the economic and social impact of their loss. Size not just in global macro terms, but also size right down to the location and to the community. What did it mean to lose ecosystem services? What was the meaning of the GDP of the poor? And so on. And we addressed the audiences of decision makers. So the TEEB study was actually one study, but in fact it was printed in four different ways. There was a TEEB for the experts on ecology and economics. And there was a team for policymakers, basically international and national policymakers. Then there was a team for the business community. And this morning, those of you who were in the plenary would have heard Paul Pullman, and the comments he made were quite relevant. And finally, there was the team for local administrators, mayors, local administrators, provincial governments, and so on. And 
The last tea was essentially a tea for people, a tea for NGOs and citizens, and which basically was not a study, it was a website with relevant information. So we did all that with a view to explaining the value of ecosystem services to a largely illiterate audience from our perspective. And most of you are literate in this, there are experts in the audience and especially at the podium. But we are trying to explain this complexity to the man on the street and to the you know, finance ministry or to the banker who reads the Wall Street Journal. That was not easy and that was the challenge of TEEP. But the challenge that we did not have at that point was to, even though we understood the importance of ecosystems towards agriculture, whether it is soil productivity or, new, or whether it is freshwater cycling or whether it is just local microclimate support, whatever it is, but there are huge benefits that go from ecosystems to agriculture. Those were not part of our, of our evaluation. So unfortunately, our study did not address the basic lack of understanding of eco-agri-food systems in the common man's mind. And this is a caricature, if you like, it's a diagram which shows you what typically someone thinks is agriculture and food, the man on the street, so to speak. And they would think in terms of a system of growing plants and, and fields and, and cattle for the purpose of generating output like food and raw materials like cotton and jute and maybe some agro-tourism. And these are the priced outputs of agriculture. And then there are the unpriced ones, the ones in the, in the open areas, the, which are lined in blue. Those are the unpriced items, which is basically the cultural heritage aspect of agriculture. But what we did not uh, look at, and I think this is the study that is being done today, is all of the other aspects of this landscape, of this eco-agri-food systems landscape. And when we do that, actually to draw you the diagram of how complex it is, this is what it looks like. There are all of these services, all the way from water to pollination, the supporting services which support agriculture, whether it is decomposition of, of waste or carbon fixation. And these are the benefits, they're all invisible. There's no market price for any of this. Then there are the invisible costs in terms of the loss of habitat, the loss of ecosystem complexity, soil erosion, and so on. Then there are the invisible costs between agriculture and food and human systems in terms of health, the costs of pesticide and fertilizers causing health problems. And then there are the impacts on the climate. All of those are invisible because there is, again, no market price. There is no way of putting this into policy using the usual tools of policymakers. So this is the challenge, ladies and gentlemen, that when we look at ecosystems and agriculture and food production, the priced outputs, those for which the markets tell us an answer as to what is this worth, there are only three of those. And the unpriced are 23, right? So this is the challenge. So therefore, whether it is the policy maker at the national level or whether it is the farmer in the field, this is the landscape of externalities in which you are expecting that person to make good decisions. And how is this going to happen? Because none of these, there is no appreciation of the value of any of these decisions. So we were just discussing a study that was done. Some scientists had surveyed uh, more than um, 285 ecologically friendly farming projects. We were just talking about this, uh, my UNEP colleagues and I. And they had looked at the outputs of sustainable farming. But of course, what they had not looked at is the costs. And therefore, this is the kind of work that does need to be done. When we do this work, we will then finally be able to get a sense of what is the small farming system compared to the intensive farming compared to the extensive farming systems. Only then. Because otherwise, these simple facts are not known to people. And those who were in the session this morning uh, between 11.45 and, and 12 would have heard questions regarding Paraguay. Somebody was asking about the small farmer and what do we do about that? and how do we, Why do we not appreciate it? Well for obvious reasons, because of the externalities. So we don't appreciate that half the food on the planet is actually grown in small farms. That there are 400 million small farms, less than two hectares. That those outputs in the small farms actually provides three-fourths of the food that goes to feed the food insecure regions. And that very often today when big corporations talk about solving the food security problem, they're not really the main actors in this challenge. The main actors is the small farm itself. And it is the farmer and her ability to generate higher yield in a small farm that makes a difference between low income for the poor and higher income because the surplus can be taken to the market or low productivity and high productivity. So we are talking here about solving two major problems, poverty and hunger. 
And yet, how little do we focus on means of increasing productivity in the small farm? How little it is a center of policy focus to actually target the small farm and its yield? Invariably, you end up with situations where you're thinking of trans transitioning systems from small farming to extensive to intensive or small to intensive. In me, al almost jumping to the conclusion that this is wrong. This has to go and we must replace it with something else. Forgetting that there are 1.1 billion jobs in small farms and that if all of them were to become intensive farms, you would need to re-employ 1.1 billion people. As an economist, I'm telling you, all of you, that you cannot do that by expecting them all to become Ferrari makers, you know, or making Porsche. That's not going to happen. So this is not just a poverty problem, not just a hunger problem, it's an employment problem. And we have to make sure we get the solutions right. But how to bring that whole context in? And this is where Red Plus comes in. This is where landscape-based approaches to carbon management come in. This is where forestry valuation comes in. This is where it really becomes important to look at what is the real value that forestry, done properly, generates for the economy and for society? What does it do for the small farm? And this, I think, is the topic of today's discussion, and this is why I think our topic is actually heart and center of what the UNFCCC COP and this is about. So, uh, the, the way that we are going about in the TEAB group for this study on eco-agri food systems is to not just look at it in terms of simple product lines. We are not just talking about rice, maize, wheat, but we've looked at that. We've looked at those systems because that's how people think. But we have looked at it and we are looking at it across different categories. Uh, how do we look at the output? How do we look at the farming system type? Is it holistic? Is it not? What are the socioeconomic characteristics? What are the land tenure types? What are the property rights issues? Looking at all of those matters holistically and then comparing different systems and their externalities. Because even our initial work suggests that there are different levels of externalities for different kinds of farming systems. So I think this is where we need to, we need to look at. Uh, the reports that the TEAV Agriculture and Food uh, study will generate, will begin with an interim report which will be launched in the, um, in the Milan Expo, which is an agricultural expo meeting taking place in May. It will be followed by two major reports, one on the scientific and economic foundations and the other one on what policies and what uh, production and consumption strategies can and should be encouraged to get a better result. And finally, we'll have a synthesis report. And we have already begun work. As I mentioned, there are initial studies that have been started and led by groups such as the Food and Agricultural Organization, various institutes from the CGIAR network, uh, by Wageningen University in the case of the, the animal husbandry study, and initial study results will soon be available to you. Um, the usual website is where it will be posted, the www.teabweb.org, uh, www.teabweb.org. And a very important uh, a figure from the, the world of food, uh, the Food and Agricultural Organization, Mr. Alexander Muller. He has been appointed as a study leader, and I will be advising the group overall. So this is our preparation. So I just wanted to mention that this is happening in the background, but the context is valuation, is ecosystems. And um, without any further ado, I would like to give the floor now to the next speaker, our guest from Zambia. Thank you. Can you set up the next uh, PowerPoint, please? N the next speaker's PowerPoint, please. Yeah, you, yeah, whatever you prefer. Where is it? So, also, this presentation will be in the PowerPoint. Yes, yes, but nice. Good yes. afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in the first place, I would like to extend my uh, sincere uh, gratitude to the organizers and to the uh, organizations who have been supporting us for inviting us to share uh, the preliminary results regarding a study which was conducted in Zambia, uh, benefits of forest ecosystems uh, in Zambia and the role of Red Plus in a green uh, economy transformation. Uh, decided to structure my presentation following those um, uh, uh, outline. First of all, I'll talk about the background, then I'll discuss 
uh, a bit about the red uh, process in Zambia, then talk about the major achievements this far, and then uh, highlight on the rationale uh, for forest ecosystem valuation, and discuss the methodology and uh, key results, and then talk about the role of Red Plus to support the transition to a green economy, and give some insights regarding the, uh, the way forward. So, this technology sometimes. Yeah, you need to uh, press okay. it hard and once, otherwise it will do that, yeah. All right. Okay, uh, regarding the background, uh, Zambia is a very uh, rich country in terms of natural resources. Uh, the total surface area of the country is uh, approximately 750,614 kilometers square, or 75, about 75 million uh, uh, hectares. Uh, in terms of forest cover, the country is covered by 49.9 million hectares. This is uh, about 66 percent of the land cover of the country is actually covered by, uh, by, by, by forests. The vegetation type is mainly the Miombo woodlands, and this uh, is further categorized into semi evergreen forests, deciduous uh, forests, evergreen forests. Uh, uh, shrub thickets, grasslands, and also um, wooded grasslands, rather. Uh, out of this vegetation, we have about 61,000 hectares of uh, plantations. These are mainly uh, exotic plantations uh, consisting of uh, uh, pine species and also eucalyptus species and, um, and some other species. Uh, unfortunately, despite being endowed with so much uh, uh, forest, the country experiences high rates of deforestation. And according to the recent study uh, completed in 2008 under the Integrated Land Use Assessment, uh, it has been estimated that the country loses about 250,000 to 300,000 hectares of forest per annum. And this is mainly caused by charcoal uh, production, wood and fuel use, timber production, and also infrastructure development most uh, especially mining. Now, with regard to the background continued, there is an overwhelming reliance of the largely poor rural communities on the natural resources, particular forest resources, for various uh, uses. Uh, it's been estimated that over 70% of the country's energy supply is from charcoal and, and firewood but only about 25% of the population have access to electricity. And when it comes to the urban population, this is about 49.3% who have access to electricity, while only a paltry 3.2% of the rural population have access to electricity. And then when you have this kind of scenario, then it shows you how much people will rely on the, on the forest for the, uh, for the purposes of uh, energy uh, use. Uh, I now wish to talk about the RAID uh, process. Through the UN RAID uh, program, the Zambian government uh, has actually undertaken a RAID plus readiness process to try to address the highlighted drivers of uh, deforestation, which I've mentioned that this is mainly due to agriculture, infrastructure development, and also charcoal production. <coughs> and the whole idea is that uh, we are moving towards uh, developing a national uh, RAID plus uh, strategy. This has been the basis for actually conducting a number of in-depth uh, studies in order to understand the current situation and trends. And this particular study, the evaluation of forest ecosystem, uh, was just one of the studies. Other studies uh, looked at drivers of deforestation. We also looked at uh, the economic context of uh, uh, deforestation, just to mention uh, a couple of the studies. Now, with regard to the major achievements, uh, the RED Plus has been integrated into the government, you know, uh, budgetary uh, frameworks. We have, as at now, completed uh, the preparation of the, of the RED strategy. We have a, a draft uh, strategy in place, which is yet to be completed, hopefully, before the end of this year. And this uh, gives an indication that Zambia is actually demonstrating its global and national commitments to promote uh, Red Plus. Then with regard to the uh, 
forest reference and emission levels and uh, forest reference levels. We have completed the land cover mapping for 1990, 2000, and also 2010. Uh, we have currently uh, nationwide forest inventories being undertaken in all the 10 provinces of the, of the country. And then the approach is to, uh, to have forest reference uh, emission levels and forest reference levels integrated into the draft uh, Red Plus strategy. With regard to national forest monitoring systems, a web portal has been established for national forest monitoring systems and ready to be launched. And we have also established a GIS unit in all the 10 provinces of the country. And then with regard to safeguards information uh, systems, the country approach for safeguards is already outlined with strength, strong stakeholder consultations in all the 10 provinces uh, with representatives from the 104 districts. And this is, at the end of the day, hope to be integrated with already established uh, uh, Red Plus wiki linked to National Forest Monitoring System and web uh, portal. Now, what was the rationale for the forest uh, valuation? Basically, I would want to just concentrate on three main points, and these are the whole idea was to provide a more holistic understanding about the economic value of Zambia's uh, forest ecosystems. And then secondly, to feed into analytical work for the development of a national uh, strategy, because if you have to develop a national strategy and then you don't understand really what is the value of the ecosystems, then I think you'll have a problem in terms of implementing the activities which you'd want. Only when you understand the value of these um, uh, ecosystem resources, then can you be able to justify the need, uh, for example, for avoided deforestation. Then thirdly, to enhance the understanding and importance of forests in the national uh, economy. And then the methodology used here, I will actually run through the different types of uh, ecosystem services and try to also to highlight the uh, estimate, how the estimate was actually arrived at. The first one I'll talk about is the industrial wood. The value was actually based on sustainable yield rather, rather than the current use. This study used uh, firstly an existing estimate of maximum allowable cut, which actually equates to about 0 0.6 of the estimated uh, uh, standing stock. And secondly, the estimate of the proportion of round wood versus fewer wood. This was using uh, prices per cubic meter, a spatial distribution of the value, which was mapped based on distribution of uh, forest uh, biomass. And then the second type of ecosystem service was, was wood fuel. This was arrived at using prices per cubic meter, uh, 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 per price per bag or volume for final products and conversions was then calculated to uh, cubic meter inputs where it was ranging from about $7 to uh, $43 uh, dollars per cubic meter. And then the other type of ecosystem was the non-wood uh, forest products. Uh, this was uh, used uh, by comparing data from area studies and analyzing using district level uh, information on forest biomass and also uh, rural population uh, density. And then the cash income from uh, forest products was a function of forest biomass and population density. And then the subsistence income was a function of population density as well. Using these relationships to estimate income at a district level and the findings of area studies on contributions of different types of resources to uh, cash and subsistence income, overall income from non-wood forest products was estimated for rural uh, households who are mainly dependent on the uh, forest uh, uh, resources. And then the other type of ecosystem service was the ecotourism, estimates of uh, the proportion of tourism, which is mainly nature-based uh, with regard to Zambia, were obtained from an earlier uh, uh, study which was, unpub which was unpublished and updated using recent tourism uh, statistics. The proportion of nature-based uh, tourism within forested areas was estimated on the basis of the uh, spatial distribution of actually photo uploads from uh, Google uh, Earth. And then the 
With regard to the other types of ecosystem services was uh, the erosion control and sediment, uh, uh, at, uh, sediment uh, retention. Uh, soil erosion and transport was actually modeled for Zambia's catchment using uh, invest. This involved uh, estimation of uh, a range of parameters relating to erodibility of soils and uh, impacts of different types of uh, land use, uh, land cover uh, on erosivity and also capacity to trap uh, uh, sediment, which was done based on the literature and also other uh, similar uh, studies. Then with regard to agriculture support uh, uh, services, the total area and production value was collated for crops which are dependent on pollination. Estimates of the number of hives, for example, was required per hectare and estimated based on values in the literature relevant for, uh, relevant, you know, for, um, I mean, in the literature for relevant or similar uh, crops. Then the replacement cost was actually estimated based on the published cost of hiring, uh, you know, uh, I mean, bee hives uh, from South Africa. Then the other service was carbon storage and sequestration. The value of maintaining current carbon stocks was estimated as damages avoided due to deforestation and also the resultant climate change impacts using, one, the global estimates of the social cost of carbon, and then secondly, a very rough estimation of the proportion of that cost that would actually be borne by, by the country based on GDP estimates for all countries and the expected relative magnitude of impacts in terms of percentage of GDP uh, for developed uh, versus uh, developing uh, countries. Then in terms of uh, the key results, I'll first of all talk about the spatial distribution of agriculture, I mean aggregate value, and uh, I mean aggregate value of forest ecosystem services uh, based on uh, uh, a dollar per hectare uh, per year. The map is not coming up. Yeah. If you look at this map, you will notice that the northeast and the south of the country appear to provide the highest economic um, uh, values of uh, Zambia's forest ecosystems per hectare. Probably one of the reasons is that these are the areas which are uh, uh, well endowed with um, uh, forest um, cover, while the western part is um, uh, not so much endow endowed with uh, forest uh, cover comparably to the, to the, north, to the, north, um, uh, to the northern parts of the country where you know, uh, there is actually high levels of um, uh, rainfall compared to the southern part where we have you know, low, low levels of uh, uh, rainfall. Now, in terms of preliminary estimates of economic value uh, for forest ecosystem services assessed again uh, per hectare per year, uh, when you talk about industrial wood, the gross output or per saving in terms of million per year was estimated at 35.8. This is industrial wood. If you recall, I mentioned about the uh, different types of uh, uh, forest uh, 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 ecosystem services. Uh, sorry, I hope I'm not... Uh, Maybe easier yeah, for... that's the one. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, then in terms of uh, fuel wood, uh, again, this is categorized into gross output or saving in terms of US million dollars per year. Then the direct value added, again, in terms of US million uh, dollars per year. Then the total value added, and then uh, the contribution uh, with regard to employment. Now, in terms of industrial round wood, the estimate was at 35 point, and then 115 in terms of direct value added, 172 in terms of uh, total value, and about 888 in terms of uh, uh, employment. Then ecotourism, uh, there was a whole range of estimates, and when you come to the total, in terms of the gross output, this is a preliminary aspect of the, eco of the economic value of forest ecosystem <coughs> services assessed. In terms of the total, it translated to about 1,303 1, uh, in terms of the gross output or saving. 
and then when it came to direct value, it was about 957, and then total value added 1,277, and then in terms of employment, you're talking about uh, more than 1, 1 million or 1,400,000. Yeah. Now, the direct and indirect values of forests considered as part of the study estimated make a direct contribution to about 4.7 in terms of gross domestic uh, product or $957 million uh, dollars using 2010 uh, uh, figures. When you use a multiplier effect, it's uh, estimated that the, the forestry and tourism related activities on the, in, the, in the sector actually contribute uh, about 6.3 in terms of uh, GDP or 1,207,000 uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, US dollars. Forests are estimated therefore to provide over mi a million jobs supporting over 60% of rural uh, Zambian households who are heavily dependent or upon the use of natural resources to supplement or sustain their uh, livelihoods. Now, this is just a, a graphic um, uh, figure. Probably I will just uh, uh, skip it. And then in terms of the role of Red Plus to support the transition into a uh, green economy, the study suggests that sustainably managed forests yield benefits worth at least about $25 per hectare per year uh, uh, on average, though it may vary uh, uh, up to over $700 uh, dollars, uh, per hectare. Then for each province and district in Zambia, the rationale for and means by which Red Plus activities can and will be undertaken may actually be different because of the different uh, uh, resource, uh, uh, resources in terms of uh, value. A number of options to reduce uh, deforestation and forest degradation include, you know, uh, the picture, I hope you can be able to see that. First three, we need to strengthen the management and the enforcement. Uh, I think it was interesting to listen to some uh, presentation in the morning which talked about you know, the lack of uh, uh, enforcement, particularly relating to law. And then also land tenure and legislation reform is actually uh, required. Then also payment for ecosystem services is another aspect which is very important. Then increased production efficiency uh, for, forest, uh, 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 for, for forest sparing mechanism and also alternative uh, uh, livelihoods. I indicated earlier on to say quite a huge population of the country are forest dependent in terms of their livelihoods. So for us to be able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to ensure that uh, Red Plus is able to support the transition towards uh, a green economy, then we need to provide alternative uh, uh, livelihoods. And then also measures to reduce demand for charcoal. I indicated earlier on that more than 70% of the population who actually depend on fuel wood for energy production. Then where forests are actually largely intact and where the potential for timber extraction is highest, the implementation of Red Plus could therefore mean to develop and enforce sustainable forest management, but also ensuring that energy needs are actually met uh, sustainably. And then secondly, also where demand for charcoal is greatest, uh, it means that more densely populated uh, areas, for example, along the line of rail of the country, uh, that is central, southern, eastern province, uh, uh, where forest cover has already been significantly reduced and degraded, Red Plus ought to address the issue of uh, the charcoal uh, demand so that we can be able to address the issues of avoided de de uh, deforestation. Then Red Plus is actually an interesting vehicle for government as the implementation of policies and measures to reduce deforestation could potentially be actually financed from result-based uh, payments. This would therefore enable the country to move towards a green economy that is focused on increasing uh, resource efficiency of forest-related products, low carbon development, and also equitable sharing of uh, uh, benefits. Uh, what is the way forward? Now, in terms of the way forward, after the, you know, uh, the study, evaluation of ecosystem services, what we think is that the results of the study should be able to support policy and legislation formulation and also review where these policies uh, exist and then probably where we find that they need to be reviewed, then the results can actually be able to 
to be uh, uh, used to, in order to improve uh, uh, the existing policies. And also, it should be able to assist in national planning and budgeting for the forestry sector. Because once we know the value of the ecosystem services, then we can be able to argue our case with our colleagues in the Ministry of Finance to be able to provide more resources to ensure that uh, you know, we, we are able to uh, uh, you know, address uh, the, the issues of deforestation. And also, we are expecting to contribute to the designing of strategies to reduce deforestation and also uh, forest deforestation. And um, last but not least, uh, used, we can also use the, the results to engage various stakeholders in enhancing the understanding of the importance of forests uh, or to national economy, as well as the goods and the services that they actually uh, provide. I did not emphasize to, to state that, uh, you know, it's, it's common knowledge that most of these um, uh, ecosystem services are undervalued, and even where they are actually valued, not everything is actually uh, reported as, uh, as, as it may uh, exist. This study particularly, uh, I, should, I, I should ask to state that most of the data was actually secondary data collected, and that it would be very good for us to move forward and try to address the issues of collecting primary data so that we can improve upon uh, the study. Yeah. I think okay. that's uh, my last slide, and thank, thank you for your attention. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ignatius. Now I would request uh, Mr. Everest Nashanda to take the floor and tell us about her work in Tanzania, uh, with particularly a view on on uh, what were the learnings and lessons, and how useful is valuation for informing green economy and red plus policy. Thank you, Mr. Facilitator, and uh, good evening. It must be evening. <laughs> so I'll take this opportunity to present um, Podium. Can, can you people, you want to try and move the slides with this? If the machine is not working, then we can ask them to do it for us. Yeah, it's coming up. So I'm, I'm only conscious of time, and we each have only about 15 minutes max. Mm -hmm. I, will, I, I would <laughs> wish to thank the organizers of this forum to invite us to present a case for Tanzania. Um, So I'll present a value, valuing Tanzanian forest ecosystem and the role of red in a green economy transformation. So the content of my presentation will be um, progress of red in Tanzania, state of Tanzania's forest ecosystem, forest valuation, rationale for carrying out a, a valuation study, um, and then I will present a little bit on methodology, um, key results, and the role of red to support a transformation, transition to green economy, and then I will conclude. As regards to progress of red in Tanzania, as uh, we may understand, Tanzania, uh, Tanzania is one of the 56 partner countries of UN Red Program, and we are among 21 countries with national 
uh, program. But this program ended in last year, 2013. But Tanzania has made a remarkable progress um, in terms of four elements as stipulated in the Warsaw Framework for RED. And this component include reference emission levels, a national, monitor, national forest measurement system and monitoring reporting and verifications of carbon stock, safeguard information system, and also a national RED strategy. Um, the national RED strategy was uh, endorsed the last year March, but uh, we may need to make some review uh, basing on the uh, decision which are taking place under the ongoing conference of parties. Uh, we think there is a need to review this working. Eh? Thank you. Oh, yeah. It's technology. Now, the current starter, uh, the starters of forest and the drivers of deforestation. Uh, Tanzania mainland is estimated to have a total forest cover of 33.5 million hectares. Government forest reserves is 16 million hectares. Village forest is about 7.5 million hectares. Forest in national park is two million hectare. Unprotected forest in village and general land, the general land we call it um, like free access. Uh, in total, it is 15.1 million hectares. And deforestation rate is 1.1% annually. Uh, I must say that these statistics are a bit old and we have carried out a national forest inventory that is, um, is going, the report is going to come up to, at the end of this year, before the end of this year, and I hope that uh, the scientists will improve, we shall improve the, this study, basing on the new data. Combined, the drivers of deforestation and degradation are de depreciating forest stocks asset in Tanzania. The main drivers being expansion of agriculture is not as uh, different from like, uh, Zambia, our neighbor, shifting cultivation, wildfires, lack of clarity uh, on boundary and tenure, illegal logging, uh, livestock grazing, unsustainable charcoal production, and the uh, for domestic and industrial use and lack of systematic management. So this is pictorial presentation of uh, drivers. As you can see, the, the, the major problem is charcoal making. Um, and of course, overgrazing, you can witness how much a person, a single person can have as much as uh, two southern uh, cows. On forest valuation, government can make better decisions if they are more aware on how forest ecosystem contributes to their economy, employment, and how forest benefit human well-being in terms of monetary value. So without monetary value, people tend to ignore. And if these statistics of value are captured by the government accounting system, is where actually the, the issue of conservation can be raised up in the national de development agenda. This information could provide all concerned stakeholders with the necessary knowledge to decide how deforestation rates can be reduced as part of transition to green economy. The rationale of the study, 
it's not different from Zambia, a better and holistic understanding about economic value of Tanzanian forest ecosystem, enhanced information about the value of forest ecosystem services that are currently captured by uh, gross domestic product, and the value of the forest ecosystem service not captured by GDP. Third, provide information that could further underwrite and advance the implementation of RED. On, on methodology used in this study, uh, the forest evaluation study was carried out by CIPA. This is Center for Environmental Economics and Policy in, in, in Africa and it's the University of Pretoria. The study captured the value of forest ecosystem services that are currently reflected in Tanzania economy using the SEEEA and EEEA framework. This stands for a system of environmental economics accounts, experimental ecosystem accounting by the United Nations. The ecosystem service identified for inclusion in this study followed the stakeholders' consultations. The sci scientists used the input-output table and the social accounting matrices to identify the importance of the forest sector by looking at its linkage with other sectors. A computable general equilibrium model was used to model the Tanzanian economy and look at economic-wide changes if household de demand for output from the hunting and forest sector was to be, be higher. A cost-benefit analysis was used to identify the net cost benefit of deforestation in Tanzanian catchment forests. If, if you could uh, try and uh, bring it to a close in about five Five, seven minutes. So the monetary cost of benefit of deforestation captured by GDP based on the based on deforestation level of three thousand three hundred sixty seven uh, thousand seven hundred and eight per hectare, the discount benefit over the period of twenty years are estimated at twenty seven million US dollars. Cost of deforestation, there were two costs involved. Cutting a hectare of forest implies that next year it won't provide provisioning services in the form of timber or non-timber forest products. And second, the forest sector has a positive effect on other economic sectors. Deforestation will reduce this positive indirect effect. The discount cost of, again, period of 20 years revealed a total cost of 72 million US dollars. Um, the monetary benefit of number of regulating and, and cultural services was estimated by using data obtained from survey on Tanzania catchment forest by the Ministry of Natural Resources. This was a study carried out in 2003 and uh, the following forest ecosystem services included in this analysis was provision of services that such as timber related, provision of services, non-timber forest product, and the other provision cultural and regulating services such as water provision, etc. The key results, discount costs, and the benefit of deforestation captured by not captured by GDP for the 20 years. The net cost of deforestation captured by GDP for the Tanzanian economy has been estimated at 45 million US dollars. That is the black uh, bar on top of the that column. The net cost of the deforestation in Tanzania catchment forest reserves for 
uh, for the economy, including accounting for non-marketed services such as water regulation, has been estimated at uh, 446 million US dollars. That is the blue bar. This shows that from an economic perspective, there is no rationale for continuing current level of deforestation. Um, another uh, key result is that the impact of investment in the forest sector on household income. A simulation was conducted analyzing the effect on household income in investment would increase in forest, agriculture, or wood paper processing sector. The results show that an increase in the output of forest sector has the greatest predictable increase in income for rural household uh, by 52 for rural poor and 187 for the rural non-poor compared to agriculture and paper processing. As you can see, this uh, landscape uh, with agriculture, forestry, and the um, industry. Based on this result, investment in the forest sector could potentially be regarded as an interesting option for poverty alleviation. The role of red to support transition to green economy. Simulation of economic model developed for Tanzania shows that increased output of forestry and hunting sector has the greatest predictable in impact on increasing level of household income. Investing in and expanding this sector can be an important component of poverty alleviation strategy and the value added of the production sector responded positively to increase activity in forest and hunting sector, which lead to conclusion that Vibrant and healthy forest and hunting sector is in the business interest of all production sectors. Could we try and bring us to a close, please? Because we're running out of time for the remaining speaker. So this study shows that based on economic analysis of available data, deforestation is not beneficial for the Tanzanian common, even on only narrowly looking at the benefit and cost that are currently captured under GDP. If non-market forest ecosystem services are taken into account, the net cost of deforestation on, on the economy is even greater. In the cognition of the global value of Tanzanian forest, red plus could improve national level forest management and conservation through result-based payment. In doing so, red result-based payment could enable Tanzania to transition to a green, more resource efficient and low carbon economy. I've don't see there. Okay. The, uh, in conclusion, Tanzania has conducted various studies relevant to RED Plus, which include National Forest Resource Monitoring and Assessment, and this assessment provides current status of forest resource in Tanzania and highlights policy options. We have also estimated a total cost to element of red plus in Tanzania, which include opportunity implementation, institutional, as well as transaction costs. But the study shows that red cannot compete with other land uses, such as charcoal production, as we speak, unless price of carbon is higher than in this land use, um, uh, than charcoal or agriculture. We have also mapped multiple benefits of forest. That is carbon stock, biodiversity, water, non-timber, soil, as well as wildlife corridor. 
So this mapping provides information for potential area where forest investment for red can be located. And also this uh, forest valuation provides direct indirect, and indirect monetary value of forest ecosystem service. Together with other studies, stimulates rational decision making and also promote rational planning and the design of project programs and the policies review that will contribute to a uh, green economy. I thank you. Thank you. Um, I have just put that uh, photograph there purposely. These are hippo stressed due to lack of water and possibly due to deforestation and forest degradation. So the streams are lacking water. Now, I don't know how these studies can capture the value of this type of, of impact. I thank you very much. I'd now like to welcome uh, the report on Panama. Primero que todo, eh, deseo agradecer al facilitador por su introducción y también eh, al PENUMA, a la FAO y al CIFOR por esta invitación gentil de poder compartir eh, esta noche ya casi eh, información sobre Panamá, específicamente sobre el programa ONU-RED que estamos desarrollando en el país. Así es que los datos que vamos a presentarle eh, son los resultados que estamos obteniendo eh, de algunos estudios. Eh, muchos de estos datos pues eh, también son aproximaciones, estimaciones, pero que eh, nos están dando eh, información muy importante eh, en relación a cómo el bosque eh, participa en la economía. Eh, Ustedes saben, bueno, la mayoría de ustedes quizás conozcan que Panamá, eh, bueno, es un país pequeño, 75 mil kilómetros cuadrados. Eh, nuestra economía eh, se basa más que todo en el sector servicio, eh, principalmente eh, el tema del eh, turismo, eh, del ingreso del canal de Panamá y la zona libre de Colón. Esto significa que el sector primario eh, realmente juega un rol eh, secundario. Eh, con respecto a los otros países de la región en la cual eh, el sector primario es su principal fuente económica. El, en esta gráfica eh, pueden observar eh, cómo la economía, el comportamiento de la economía eh, de Panamá eh, en los últimos eh, 20 años, pueden observar eh, eh, cómo con respecto a Latinoamérica eh, se ha estado comportando y que en, en la mayoría de los casos ha estado eh, superando eh, ese crecimiento en la región. Así que aquí pueden ver eh, en esta comparación pues que la economía nuestra ha tenido eh, crecimientos eh, como en el 2005 eh, hasta eh, casi el 12%, ¿no? Esto es y actualmente se proyecta un 7% para el próximo año. En cuanto a la cobertura boscosa total en Panamá, eh, pueden observar los datos que eh, del año 92 al 2008, eh, la deforestación ha continuado, eh, y en este periodo pues eh, ha calculado en 18.000 hectáreas anuales que es... Eh, representa un 40.43% y mientras que en el 2000 al 2008 eh, tenemos eh, 55.000 hectáreas que representa 1.46. Eh, actualmente esto es basado en el mapa del 2008 realizado por eh, Catalac y, y actualmente eh, estamos finalizando, ya hemos finalizado el, el nuevo mapa del 2012. Eh, en la cual pues encontramos la fase de, de generación de estadísticas para ver eh, cómo eh, se está comportando eh, la deforestación. Eh, en cuanto a la contribución de los bosques a la economía, eh, 
una de las formas quizás eh, más factibles de evaluar esto es eh, a través de la contribución del sector forestal al Producto Interno Bruto, eh, en la cual el, el sector forestal participa en, en diferentes sectores y ahora vamos a ver un, un pequeño análisis que hemos eh, realizado para poder reflejar eh, esto. Aquí pueden observar entonces que la contribución del sector forestal en el Producto Interno Bruto a través de, de los años ha ido descendiendo ¿verdad? y esto eh, eh, tiene una explicación porque el, la eh, madera que se utiliza en el país eh, generalmente había provenido de concesiones forestales y hoy día eh, prácticamente no tenemos concesiones forestales sino permisos comunitarios eh, y la cual el aporte ha ido disminuyendo, como puede observarse aquí ya en el 2010, que bajó a 0.44. Y sin embargo, eh, pueden observar que eh, el, el porcentaje es mucho mayor en cuanto a las manufacturas que usan productos forestales en Producto Interno Bruto, que esto tiene que ver más con la importación de, de papel y, y otros productos eh, de madera. En cuanto a la contribución indirecta, eh, vemos que el sector silvicultura, porque en las eh, estadísticas nacionales se refleja como silvicultura, eh, vemos entonces que el sector participa eh, en, en, en dos contextos, en los sectores arriba, que son eh, el sector maquinaria, o sea, de explotación forestal, y, y los sectores abajo es donde eh, ya sería entonces lo que es la transformación en cuanto a la construcción y, y los negocios eh, relacionados a esto, ¿no? Eh, ¿Cuál es el impacto entonces del sector forestal sobre la producción y el valor agregado general en los demás sectores? Es la, la pregunta. Aquí eh, hemos hecho un esfuerzo por reflejar precisamente cómo el, el sector forestal eh, está relacionado con el, los sectores arriba y los sectores abajo que vimos anteriormente. Entonces, en el periodo 2002 al 2011 vemos entonces aquí que el sector forestal, si ven aquí en el eje X, eh, es el que más eh, participa eh, en, en, en el sector bajo, ¿no? como vimos anteriormente. Así que, y en cuanto a los otros sectores, vemos que en cuanto a volumen también es mínimo, como lo que le había mencionado anteriormente, que la economía nuestra se basa más en el sector eh, servicio. Eh, bueno, esta tecnología a veces, a veces se pone rebelde, ¿no? Bien, algunos datos eh, sobre los bienes y servicios ambientales eh, en cuanto a la provisión de madera. Eh, estos son pues, datos promedios en cuanto a, a los rendimientos de, del bosque eh, con planes de manejo. Eh, pueden ver aquí los datos casi 8 metros cúbicos por hectárea en la región del Darién, que es en la región eh, cercana con Colombia, eh, y la, el margen de ganancia eh, producido por la extracción de madera, que está entre los 20 y 44 dólares por metro cúbico. Entonces, eh, en cuanto al, al servicio eh, que provee el bosque, de, bueno, en este caso de bienes, eh, como la madera, sin planes de manejo forestal, vemos que los datos eh, son eh, mayores que lo producido por eh, la madera con planes de manejo forestal, ¿no? Y esto, aquí se refleja un poco el costo que, que tienen que le, las compañías o, los, o los, eh, los, eh, las comunidades que utilizan el, el bosque a través de aprovechamiento, pues tienen que invertir ¿no? en, en la elaboración de estos planes y en el seguimiento eh, del mismo. También eh, eh, otro aspecto aquí que quería resaltar es que la producción de madera sin planes de manejo eh, eh, generalmente no se da eh, a través de, de los permisos comunitarios, sino a través de permisos eh, de subsistencia o permisos domésticos. Entonces son permisos de, de, de dos árboles al mes eh, eh, por persona, eh, entonces eh, esto no, no, no está bajo un, un manejo eh, forestal y, y puede ocurrir, como se refleja aquí, que el, 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 el volumen es mucho mayor a veces eh, y esto eh, va en detrimento del bosque y nosotros estamos tratando en la, una nueva ley forestal que estamos elaborando tratar de, de, de agrupar a estas personas para que en conjunto puedan 
eh, elaborar un plan de manejo y de esta forma eh, eh, mejorar eh, el uso de, de, del bosque. En este mapa eh, pueden apreciar en verde los bosques que todavía eh, nos quedan en Panamá. Eh, estamos hablando eh, eh, en, el, en el mapa de, del 2012, estamos teniendo valores eh, aproximados de eh, más del 60%, por, quizás un poco por la, eh, cate, las categorías que estamos utilizando. Y en amarillo pueden observar las zonas de uso agropecuario en las que habría que reforestar o eh, dirigir proyectos de agroforestería y eh, silvopastoriles. Eh, este mapa es, es interesante, esta división que hemos hecho, porque la Estrategia Nacional Red estamos eh, 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 marcándola en, un, en dos contextos, en tierras con bosques, que es donde orientaríamos eh, a, a Red, y la tierra sin bosques, que es donde eh, vamos a reforestar, ¿no? a secuestrar carbono. Entonces ya inclusive eh, el nuevo gobierno ha lanzado eh, la alianza por el, millón, por el millón de hectáreas en 20 años, que será entonces parte complementaria de los esfuerzos que estamos haciendo eh, a través de eh, RED. En cuanto a los ingresos que se perciben de los servicios ambientales, en este caso el flujo del agua, eh, vemos aquí en, en el caso del canal que la provisión de agua se utiliza eh, en, en dos vías hacia el consumo humano y para el transporte de, de los barcos en el canal, ¿no? Y hemos hecho algunos cálculos, eh, por ejemplo, cuál es el valor eh, del agua, de un metro cúbico de agua adicional en la época seca. Y vemos el valor de 0.44 dólares por metro cúbico, lo que comparado con los precios del agua eh, de la institución nacional que, que administra el, el agua eh, eh, para las eh, ciudades, vemos que es eh, eh, sensiblemente casi eh, menos de la mitad. En cuanto a la protección de suelo, también eh, hemos hecho algunos cálculos eh, en cuanto a la contribución del bosque para, para prevenir la, la erosión y también eh, se ha calculado en cuanto al tema de la fertilidad, eh, cuánto eh, habría, habría que invertir si el bosque no contribuyera a la fertilidad del suelo. Esto arroja un valor de 490 dólares por hectárea al año. Y en este punto eh, quería comentarles que este, este es un aspecto es muy importante cuando hablamos de, de la deforestación porque precisamente este valor que ustedes ven allí es el valor que tendría que invertir un campesino ¿verdad? cuando deforesta porque lamentablemente en, en los países tropicales o afortunadamente, no sé eh, el 70% de los suelos son de vocación forestal esto significa que al tercer año que la, las, los campesinos están utilizando este bosque, la productividad del suelo baja tremendamente. Entonces, él tiene que invertir en comprar fertilizantes. Pero como estas personas son de escasos recursos económicos, no tienen eh, cómo eh, eh, acceder a estos fertilizantes. Entonces, eso provoca que eh, el bosque que está enfrente de ellos nuevamente se ven obligados a deforestar. Y este es un ciclo perverso que... que, que que es uno de los retos que tenemos y en donde pensamos que, que Red puede contribuir eh, significativamente. En cuanto a eh, el, los otros servicios ambientales que el bosque presta, ¿verdad? porque eh, aquí podemos ver un, eh, un listado eh, eh, de, de los cálculos que hemos hecho, y eh, resaltamos en el caso eh, de Panamá que, por ejemplo, para el tema de carbono, que son eh, datos eh, eh, conservadores, vemos que eh, justamente de esto es que se trata. ¿no? O sea, el, el, el RET es una oportunidad para visibilizar el valor del bosque, porque como ustedes ven, la provisión de madera sin planes de manejo refleja eh, valores que... Eh, si lo comparamos con los productos no maderables del bosque más los servicios ambientales son ingresos mucho mayores pero el, el campesino no percibe eso ¿no? o sea la gente que, que utiliza el bosque no lo percibe porque siempre nos hemos enfocado en la madera y es allí donde, donde creo que tenemos un reto importante de poder eh, ir demostrando ese valor que, que el bosque tiene y que la gente puede vivir del bosque ¿no? porque 
cuando el campesino lo tumba y lo quema es porque le asigna un valor cero. ¿no? Entonces, creo que eh, ese es, eh, es donde debemos enfocarnos. En cuanto a las eh, ganancias y pérdidas eh, por la deforestación, eh, aquí pueden observar algunos datos en, en el año 2012 eh, y en el periodo del 92 al 2012, eh, en, eh, cómo se ha ido eh, eh, acumulando la, 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 las pérdidas económicas netas eh, por, debido a la deforestación. Y estos son cálculos eh, también... Eh, son cálculos conservadores porque eh, hemos utilizado el, el, el rango menor para hacer estos cálculos porque si hubiéramos utilizado el rango mayor posiblemente eh, en el periodo este eh, quizás lo hubiera eh, triplicado ¿no? lo cual son recursos importantes que el país ha, de, ha dejado de percibir eh, al eh, perderse pues todos este, estos bosques ¿no? Finalmente, entonces, eh, algunas eh, conclusiones y recomendaciones que podemos nosotros eh, compartir con ustedes es que el sector forestal es un sector pequeño eh, en la economía, pero contribuye eh, en los demás sectores, aunque en el Producto Interno Bruto generalmente no es visible toda esa contribución. ¿no? Ese es eh, otro aspecto en el cual en Panamá tenemos que mejorar cómo eh, establecemos cuentas eh, ambientales o cuentas satélites en, en las cuentas nacionales para poder realmente ver en forma más clara la contribución del bosque y de esta forma también poder eh, tener argumentos con los tomadores de decisiones en cuanto a, a políticas públicas eh, que se refieren eh, a, o al tema de forestal o del sector. Eh, los, se necesita más información para mejorar la evaluación de los servicios ambientales del bosque, que ya ha hecho mucho énfasis en esto. Eh, hay que desarrollar nuevos indicadores eh, eh, que tomen en cuenta los recursos naturales, con lo que mencionaba de, de las cuentas ambientales a través de un PIB verde, y diseñar políticas diferentes según la región. Nosotros, eh, este es un aspecto también importante, estamos abordando en la Estrategia Nacional Red eh, en la cuenca como unidad de planificación territorial, porque nosotros tenemos eh, 52 cuencas que que las tenemos, hemos trabajado en, en, en su planificación, tenemos una ley de, de, de cuencas en la cual se establecen comités de cuencas y, y, y tenemos la cuenca del canal, una de la, las la más importantes, eh, que eh, estamos desarrollando allí muchas actividades y proyectos pilotos que nos puedan servir también de modelo hacia las otras cuencas, ¿no? Y de esta forma poder eh, enfocar más eh, eh, los planes de manejo que allí se realicen eh, eh, tomando en cuenta la integración del, del paisaje ¿no? creo que me queda una más eh, en cuanto a políticas públicas también pensamos que, que Red eh, eh, también eh, es, es una oportunidad para, para el país eh, porque eh, eh, nos va a permitir visibilizar el, el bosque ¿no? eh, eh, en una forma eh, que, que puede eh, romper paradigmas en cuanto a, 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 a la percepción que la comunidad tiene en cuanto a este recurso. Eh, puede también contribuir al manejo del, del aprovechamiento forestal a través de las certificaciones. Eh, tenemos en, en una región eh, de la comarca en Veragonán, donde, no sé si han visto acá la, la, uno de los compañeros de la comarca en Veragonán que está por acá, eh, que allí ellos han logrado certificar por primera vez aproximadamente unas 45 mil hectáreas eh, y eso creo que es, es un logro eh, importante eh, se deben favorecer los usos de las tierras alternativos eh, en cuanto al silvo eh, sistema silvopastoril y agroforestería porque eh, precisamente el, el reto es bueno cómo, eh, es, cómo introducimos el, el árbol en esas actividades agrícolas y en esas actividades eh, 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 pastoriles en la ganadería entonces Creo que eso, eso también es importante, eh, que, el, que el árbol eh, pueda verse también, no solamente como, como un ingreso adicional a la, a, a la finca, sino también como, como un elemento que valoriza la finca, como un elemento que aporta eh, servicios ambientales eh, adicionales. Eliminar las políticas públicas que favorecen el uso de las tierras conflictivas. Bueno, esto eh, es importante porque... Muchas veces eh, las la fuentes de financiamiento, eh, sobre todo en el sector rural, 
eh, no toman en cuenta las limitaciones del, 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 de la tierra y, y muchas veces hay contradicciones en las políticas públicas y, y ahí habrá que hacer un trabajo eh, enorme de poder compatibilizar todas estas eh, eh, leyes que, que vayan hacia un, un objetivo eh, de eh, conservar el bosque. El, el, finalmente, el, el RED pensamos que también un, es un es un eh, esfuerzo que nos puede ayudar mucho en el tema del ordenamiento territorial, eh, porque por lo general en nuestros países no existe esa, esa planificación territorial y, y RED puede dar ese, ese paso, ser ese disparador de, que, de, de, de ver el bosque ya en, en su justa dimensión y poder eh, mostrar su valor eh, para competir con otros usos de la tierra, ¿no? que, que hay que por lo generalmente eh, está en desventaja. Así que bueno, eh, no voy a, voy a terminar por ahora porque sé que estamos en el límite del tiempo. Muchas gracias. Thank you for bringing us uh, in, in, uh, to close in, in just some time. Now I think, uh, Tim, if we have the luxury of another five minutes, at least take a few questions from the audience. Just for those who are... Uh, particularly interested in Indonesia, I su suggest you contact me and I'll be happy to send you the study. So in the interest of time, I just want people to ask questions about the three countries that we have just heard from the representatives who are here with us. So questions, uh, given your name, your institutional affiliation, and hopefully a tweet length size question, not a long essay. And if there are actually no questions, then I will summarize which I close. I think you have made such excellent presentations that everybody is dumbfounded. <laughs> so I, I want to just put a quick question across to all of you, which is in the form of a summary, which is that in undertaking these studies, would you, each of you, the same question, would you say that the value of valuation has been recognized by your governments? In other words, this was worth doing. And therefore, has it actually led to some appreciation of the fact that these ecosystem service values need to be recognized as part of a proper red plus formulation and a pro proper green economy formulation? Would you say this has been achieved in each of your cases? What is your own assessment? Mm. Um, I think at this point in time, the evaluation is under process. Under process, okay. And the, we think that after the study is complete, then is where we can disseminate the findings of the, of the study yeah. to policy makers, decision makers, public government agencies, as well as the public in general, and thereby maybe convince our colleagues from Ministry of Finance so to recognize, recognize the evaluation, that. the importance of evaluation and include it into the, the government accounting system. And uh, Ignatius, what would be your opinion on this? I mean, I, I noticed from your numbers, quite impressive, at least your initial estimates of total value added of 1.3 billion, and the fact that there's 1.4 million employees in, uh, in Zambia, effectively employments. Would you say these are beginning to be appreciated? Is there a value in valuation, either for Red Plus or for the economy planning or both? Yeah, I would say that uh Though the, uh, this is uh, still a study uh, and work in progress, but I think this has been something which has been uh, always, uh, you know, uh, been asked for by our colleagues from the Ministry yes. of from the Economic, uh, I mean, from the Ministry of Finance, that uh, they really needed to uh, understand what is indeed the value of uh, particularly the forest, so that they can be able to. Uh, justify even the allocation of uh, uh, more resources uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that the forest resources are 
uh, actually better uh, managed and better, better uh, protected. And I think this is, uh, uh, I, would, I would say that it has generated some excitement, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, in the many uh, sectors who are actually aware that this kind of work is going on and they are indeed looking forward to see uh, the finalization of this, um, uh, uh, this um, uh, study. And uh, if you recall, I mentioned that uh, uh, most of the information was collected from the secondary data, but I think it would be important for us now to uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, ensure that we uh, use uh, primary data so that we can be able to uh, further uh, uh, ju uh, justify you know, the value of these uh, uh, resources. Okay. So and in, in uh, being a country with us uh, endowed with so much uh, uh, resources, resources, I think it's only important for us to be able to uh, give that value so that we can uh, be able to uh, justify even the uh, resource allocation to the, uh -huh. uh, to the sector. So I would say that uh, this is something which, yes, is indeed uh, being appreciated, okay. uh, you know, uh, across uh, uh, sectors and uh, uh, I think most of the sectors are actually looking forward to uh, really uh, knowing the final results. And the, uh, Good. So, so the gen your general sense is that yes, the uh, valuation has uh, helped policy recognize the importance of the forestry sector. It certainly has helped uh, a better appreciation in economic terms of the significance of forestry. Yeah, exactly, because uh, uh, I should also state that one of the things we are doing also uh, related to this is uh, uh, conducting uh, forest livelihood, forest livelihood and uh, mm -hmm. economic social surveys yes. uh, with our colleagues in the Ministry of Finance. So that already points uh, the need, you know, for you know more, much more reliable data. Uh, actually, it's being recognised that uh, you know the forestry sector uh, is not uh, uh, well captured in the uh, national uh, economy. So with such kind of studies and other studies which are, are going on in the country, I think it's being appreciated that we need to do uh, uh, you know, studies of this kind so that we can be able to. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Gomez, what is your experience in the same context uh, in Panama? What do you say? Eh, bueno, yo diría que nosotros, al igual que los colegas de Zambia y Tanzania, también estamos eh, iniciando un proceso Eh, nosotros estamos terminando la primera fase preparatoria, estamos eh, ahora mismo en la consulta y participación de lo que es la Estrategia Nacional Red estamos involucrando a todos los sectores en, en estas discusiones eh, ha habido muchas eh, expectativas hay, hay mucho interés en participar eh, esperamos que también con eh, el nuevo gobierno que tenemos eh, Eh, ha mostrado un, un interés eh, particular en el tema, eh, inclusive nosotros eh, se ha planteado crear un nuevo Ministerio del Ambiente porque no tenemos un Ministerio como tal formal, entonces esto eh, es muy importante para nosotros porque permite que el tema eh, ambiental eh, eh, se discuta a nivel del Consejo de Gabinete y, top, y yes. también eh, eh, yeah. poder pelear por más presupuesto, yeah. ¿no? Yeah. Entonces, y, y, Excellent. Yeah. So it, the, the phrase that we say in English that uh, economics is the currency of policy, in a sense, you are proving through your political actions that they recognize this. Right. Yeah. Así es. Entonces, yo creo que, que eso eh, es positivo. Eh, también el, el, el lanzamiento que hizo el presidente en la cumbre de Nueva York de, de Eh, la, eh, de la Alianza por el Millón de Hectáreas en 20 años es por primera vez mm. se, se plantea mm. algo así mm. un reto eh, a largo plazo que, que eh, pues, pensamos que va a ser eh, muy significativo porque no solamente eh, eh, se trata del tema quizás de, 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 de ambiental sino el tema social también ¿no? sí, de la generación de empleos eh, eh, a mejorar la calidad de vida de las personas ¿no? eh, eh, y de esta forma Eh, sentar las bases de, de, de una, una nueva relación con el bosque, de una cultura del bosque ¿no? que, que necesitamos. Eh, en cuanto a la otra pregunta, eh, eh, sí, pensamos que, que eh, a largo plazo eh, eh, 
los otros servicios ambientales del bosque eh, pues están allí eh, eh, y hay que considerarlos. ¿no? Me llamó mucho la atención las estadísticas de, de los países de aquí hermanos de África que ponen mucho énfasis o, o los ingresos eh, se reflejaban altos en cuanto a, al tema de la leña, en cuanto al tema del turismo. Eh, más yes. que inclusive la madera, ¿no? Entonces, es, eso me llamó mucho la atención. Eh, entonces, que son otros eh, bienes y servicios ambientales que, que en el caso de ellos se valoran más que, que en nuestros países, ¿no? Entonces, Red puede también ayudar a, a... Quizá porque Red tampoco podemos pensar que va a resolver todos los problemas del sector forestal, pero sí puede contribuir eh, a mejorar las políticas públicas y y pues eh, a visibilizar el bosque, ¿no? que es el, el red. Excellent. Thank you very much. And with this, I thank our, our colleagues and give, let's give them a great hand for the hard work they have done thank you. and for being here with us today.